Hello, English students. This is a really quick tutorial on the best way to take Cornell notes, and I want to try to make sure that um, you're taking notes the right way this year. There will be no way for me to know if the way that you're doing this is right, except for when I come by and walk by and see how you're filling in Cornell style notes. I'm going to review some of the basic things here, and then I want you to highlight or underline some of the things that are on your paper. This is going to stay in your notes, this page. I wanted you to have a basic understanding of this, especially as we go into this first assignment. I'll ask you to take Cornell style notes on the basics of plot. So let's talk about some basic things for Cornell style notes, okay? So here's the overview of your paper. Um, you can go ahead right now and find another piece of paper and go ahead and make it look like this. You do need to have a cue column, a note-taking area, and a summary. And so when I do this, uh, you might want to draw a line here. Some students fold these areas. I like to draw a line myself, um, but you want to essentially make this area, it says right here, you know, be six inches. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a good area for note taking, a good cue column, and a decent area here for summaries. All right. Now let's talk about the important part, and that's how you take these notes. I want you to go ahead and write this down. Yeah, make sure that you do write this down, um, the date and the subject and your class if this isn't already organized in your binder by class. The second thing is the note-taking area. And so I want us to be clear about what it is that you need to do as you're taking notes. You do not need to write down every word spoken by the instructor or myself. Do not do this, okay? If you just try to record everything word for word, it probably means that you're just, you're not even thinking, you're just recording everything that's being said. And that's not the best way to take notes. When you take notes, what you want to do is, I'm going to skip down right here, is you want to go ahead and look for key ideas and headings, bulleted sections, bold-faced words, anywhere that looks and sounds more important, okay? And I want you to circle that word more. Uh, you want to find the most important information. There's lots of things you need to consider when you do that. And what's most important is going to be based on the information that you have and the instructor that you have and the types of things that instructor looks for. At the beginning of the year, I will be telling you some of those things that I am looking for, but you should listen to the instructor's voice and get an idea about the inflections or tones that are given and what's emphasized on that PowerPoint slide or in that note-taking take section. This is a real skill, and so you really need to work at looking at, okay, when I see that paragraph, when I hear that instructor speak, what are the words that are most important, okay? All right, so note-taking area, all right? I want you to make yourself a little note right here. Write this down, okay? Most important. So you're going to have lots of stuff here. I mean, it's going to be full. You want to try to get as much stuff as you can, but you also want to get the things that are most important. All right, now let's go down the Q column. Now, the Q column is basically this. It is not created until you review your notes. Go ahead and underline that. Not created until you review your notes. Now, some students start to create this Q column while the instructor is speaking. And although there are some there is some value to that, the problem is, is that once you get done, if you don't go back and review your notes when you're done, most of the power of the Cornell note style is lost. So you really want to do this when the notes are done. Okay, you want to go back and ask yourself the question, okay, what was that about? Okay, you also want to think about questions. So as you go back through the notes, then you come over here and you write your questions. We're talking about the Q column right here, right? We have questions. Go ahead and put this down here. So I have questions, and I might draw a little arrow to where it is in the notes right here. Okay, I know that's a terrible looking arrow. Go to write that there. So I'll have questions. I might also have over here um, anything that clarifies the meaning. Okay, um, you know, reveals relationships, you know, between the notes, um, establishes continuity with the notes, anything at all strengthening your memory, um, and predicting the test and exam items. So one of the things you can do over here is, you know, um, clarify things. Sometimes you might have uh, a little summary, or you might have, for example, um, some of the keywords over here, uh, so those are things that help clarify. Um, but you can also have things starred. You can have whatever you need over here. If you think it's something that's going to be on the test, the instructor says test, you write that down. So this is on the test and put yourself a little star. This is your like your key, if you think of it that one, 
uh, you know, your Q column, it's to Q it where it's at in the text. So it's actually Q along where it's at. So make sure that you draw an arrow where that was pointing to for that text. It cues it, but it's also like your key for the notes. And it's done not before or during the note taking time, but after the note taking time. All right. That's the key there. The last thing is this is a summary. And what you want to try to do is just give your own words in one to three sentences. Okay. By looking at the most important keywords and phrases from the notes. So you really want to try to get these, these important phrases and words and put that together in an effective summary. All right. Um, the last thing would be this right here is that you do need to review those notes before taking a test. And that's true for any notes, but just because you did all three of those steps, that doesn't mean you're going to retain it. You do need to review before taking a test. All right, that's it. We're going to do a little practice in class. I want you to have that stuff underlined and uh, hopefully this helps for when we uh, take notes on the basics of clock.